Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. Now then, I did this video last year. I'm pretty sure I did do it around Halloween time just because I thought it was very, very fitting. And I basically went around my shop and got some uglies. And I don't just mean like, oh, something with a, a bit of a fold in the leaf. I mean like real uglies. The video went down a treat with you guys. And a lot of you said, look, this is actually a little bit motivational because it's nice to know that everyone has ugly things, everyone kills things, all of the rest. So I thought, obviously, it's that time of year. Why don't we do another one? I don't have a ton of plants in today's video because as it happens, I've done a really big clear out of the shop recently and I've got rid of a lot of crap. So it's really unfortunate timing. I should have had more things to show you, but I do have some decent ones. I think all of these are reasonably embarrassing, to be honest. Maybe the one next to me isn't, but generally they're pretty shit. So if you'd like to see some shit plants, then keep on watching. And I think we should start strong. Now, you might just think all I've done here is pruned a bit of dead Monstera, right? This Monstera Deliciosa. And honestly, this is really at the point where you don't even know what it was underneath. I have three plants here. This one's straight up rotted. Let's get a load of that rot, because as I say, it's that time of year. Get a load of that. That's nice, isn't it? Mmm, yeah, yummy. Then we've got a lovely another one here, which it looks more intact than it is, if you know what I mean. It's just the whole node is pretty much rotted. And then, which one did I not show you? This one here is pretty much gone as well. What are these plants, you ask? Well, these plants here, guys, this is three nodes from a Monstera Deliciosa. Mint. Now, normally I wouldn't care if propagations went to shit, right? But as you all know, a few weeks ago, I bought a couple of brutes, really. I bought more than one and I bought some Monstera Mint. And I keep telling you sometimes, you know, propagations fail. It's what happens. And I thought I would take this opportunity to reaffirm to you that it happens to everybody and this is what occurs. So basically, a few days ago, these were a little bit more you know, flapped out. They weren't quite in the state of decay that they are now. And they were just sat in amongst my good bits of Monstera. And I thought, oh, it's not so bad. It might just be one cutting with a, you know, little bit going on. No, there was at least three. And I think I've nearly lost another one. I have another one in water at the minute, which I don't think is doing amazingly. And um, because this, this has happened. And you know what? Sometimes you just get unlucky and it can happen to any of us. Now, I will prove my point just so you know I'm actually serious. You can see it here. You can see where the variegation is right there. That would have been a good one, wouldn't it? Oh, it would have been really nice. So yeah, that's Monstera de la Ciosa Mint. Thousands in my hand here, if this was alive. Thousands of pounds. So this is nice. I thought what a way to kick the video off by sharing with you my grief. Although what I will say is I had someone in the shop last week um, interviewing me for a magazine and they asked me like what happens with all these plants, all these valuable plants if they die? Like does it not like kill you inside? And I basically said yeah it does but you can't it's really hard to explain and it's something that you just have to deal with, but you can't think of it like that. Even though you have to think of it like that when you have plants like these and they die and they were worth a lot to you and you put a lot of money into investment, you have to kind of separate yourself a little bit so that it, so that you're able to keep on doing it. You know what I mean? And it, it's just really weird. Like if I were to spend I don't know, a thousand pounds on a box of either one plant or several plants or something like that, right, from a supplier. I wouldn't think too much of that. But if I was to spend a thousand pounds on a personal item, like outside of this shop, my own money on something, I would stress about it for a long time because it's a lot of money and I, I am like that normally. But for the purposes of this shop and how it works, I've had to completely remove myself from it and it's the only way to go forward, really. So this is shit, but I'm not losing sleep over it, even though it is really, really shit. But I wanted to show you these because they stink. It's got to be the back of the throat actually. And this happens to literally everyone. It might happen to a normal plant. It might happen to a really expensive one you brought in. And I wanted to show you the point that this does happen. And if we just whiz it, now it's forgotten about. Now we can move on. So I'm going to grab the second plant and I don't know what to get for you. I have some uglies here. The next plant I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to show you a plant that would have been in a variegated plant hole. It is a plant that's extremely tough. It's been on my wish list for a while, but they were really expensive and I just thought, oh, I, you know, I can't justify that. A little bit like the situation with the philodendron golden dragon. I've waited and waited and waited and waited, and waited to get it to a point where I'm like, okay, I, I can... 
I can risk this. And I brought him in and he didn't look so bad when he came in. He was very battered though. All of the variegation just went to Doritos, you know, as, as you do. It either goes to mush or it turns into Dorito, one or the other. I brought him in and it's so bad that the variegated parts that are there and would be there have gone essentially and all you can see is green so this plant looks absolutely horrific so i've saved him for this video because i feel like he deserves it i do think he will have a glow up though but i'll just get you the plant now and he is variegated i promise you he is actually variegated you can see it okay you can tell i'm not making this hard <laughs> oh this is so unfortunate so if i can show you this leaf here you might be able to guess what he is i will give you five seconds to guess what he is can you see that there hang on let me get him to the camera a little bit more if I show you him there, five seconds. And then I'll show you the growth pattern really quickly. That should be quite indicative of what he is if you can't tell already. So this guy, and I will prove he is variegated because I promise he is, but you can see my point. Well, you can see it there, can't you? You can see where it was. That's, that's the level, guys, of how badly this plant just decided to crawl into a hole and die. So you've got this guy that would have been this gorgeous sectoral variegation and you got this guy that was eh, not great, don't get me wrong, but you can see where his variegation may have been. I'll show it to you up close. Sorry if it's not focusing very well. This lens does not like autofocusing as well. So yeah, I've got him there, him there. He was green anyway. The petioles look quite good. I don't know if you can see those. Hopefully you can. Yes, you can. You can see the, oh my God, this camera. It knows I'm talking about it, that's why. You can see the variegation through the plant there. You'll see that the genetics are good. And this is my second lesson of whatever we call this video. I think I called it last year, Little Shop of Horrors, because it kind of fits. The next lesson I want to tell you about is sometimes in a plant this happens and what matters are the genetics, okay? All this means is for me to get a recoup on my investment, it's going to be much longer because I can't necessarily, you know, cut this leaf, root it, sell a rooted leaf on or something like that. I now have to wait 10 times as long because this looks like shit, does it not? I mean, this just looks terrible. It was a good deal. I got a good deal on it. And again, it didn't look this bad before I got it, but it's not looking great. I think we've lost a leaf at one point as well because I have a petiole here that's dying off. That's my point. Like sometimes again, this happens. Is it normal? Yes, absolutely. It's the perils of shipping. And I have no experience of the variegated version of this plant, but I do have experience of just the plain green version. My parents have one of these plants, um, all green, and they're obsessed with it. I might have a photo of it somewhere. And my mum has been absolutely obsessed with the idea of getting one of these in. So my mum will know how beautiful these things grow. But if you haven't seen this plant large, then you might not know. But they are very, very tough. So I have no doubts. It was a good investment in that sense, because I know this will come back. But this is literally why I didn't show you it in the hall, because you would have just looked gone. Why are you showing me this? This is shit. And yeah, it is. This, this, this is shit. But it won't be shit in a while. But that's the point. We don't always put things on Instagram or anything like that, but, you know, the most noteworthy. And I think I said this last year as well. Shit like this happens all the time. And this is just another example of things that not only shops deal with, but I'm sure you guys deal with it as well. Sectoral variegation. I know we all love it, right? But literally, if you're shipping it, it's not always practical. If you don't get that temperature just right when you ship it, depending on the plant, of course, this shit can happen. And this is a very leathery plant and it's done it. So there you go. Thormatophyllum African Fantasy Variegata. I don't even believe I told you what the plant was this whole time. That's dumb, but that's what it is. Thormatophyllum African Fantasy Variegata. I'm sure, I have no doubts, if I get some of my feed in it by spring, it's going to look real cute and real beautiful. And I might have a bit in my house. But until then, just trust me, I guess, that he's probably sexy, right? What can you do? Let's talk about something else that happens in shops and it happens to the best of us and it's really not in our control. Now there's two things I want to show you on the next plant. One is the terrible, terrible shape of it. I think these plants don't really like pond and I will go into that in a bit. So essentially I want to show you this because it's in really bad condition and I mean really, like this is embarrassing. This is, wait till you find out what it is. It's really embarrassing. But second of all, it's, it's all but reverted. It's a challenge to keep it variegated and it's not just this plant, it's any of them. I have to say that. So next plant I'm going to show you guys. <laughs> oh God, this. Can you tell what it is? Can you tell what it is? Oh, it's been chopped. So I didn't realize it was that unhinged. Okay, so that top bit's cut off already because it's reverted. But can you see what this is? This, this is your clue as to what it is, guys. Yes, really. That right there 
is a variegated glory awesome and this might make a cute thumbnail shall we oh yeah beautiful absolutely beautiful not oh i had a problem a while ago i think something in my control system should we say if the lights and everything went off I think it was the timer. I had problems with that. So my plants are in the dark for about a month. Obviously, they still got light in here. That's fine. But they didn't have enough. That happened. Then we also had a heat wave at some point, and these just took a battering. They also... Did they get over underwater at some point as well? That happened. Like, a lot of the plants in this unit are actually looking quite shit. And I will get onto that at the end, so stay tuned, because I have some photos of a specific corner in my unit that is... Well, you'll see. So anyway, I want to show you that this happens and I don't, I, in this situation, I don't actually mean the really shitness of this plant. I actually mean the reversion. So if you don't know, variegate gloriosum costs quite a bit of money, I'm not going to lie, but you have to deal with this. Now, it is look of the draw. Some people have gorgeous ones. A lot of people haven't cut theirs too much because honestly, once you get good variegation going that's balanced, fucking keep it. I'm telling you now, if you're going to propagate from this thing, let it grow a few and then cut it. Do not wait for a good leaf, then cut it. I'm telling you, it is not worth it. I don't know why it's this difficult for me, but I have a few that are like this. I'm just going to be totally honest with you guys. I have quite a few that are like this. Not like this. Obviously, they don't look this bad. But in terms of reversion, they look like this. So there's another lesson for you. Now, what I have been doing, I will share with you because I, I didn't realize I'd done it. That's why I went to tip it and it went woo everywhere. But if I can just tip this up and hopefully show you, oh my God, I'm literally dripping water into my camera. Can I show you that? See there, these are actually like loose. A lot of these, like this one on the bottom here is loose. It's not connected anymore to the plant. Can you see it there? Yeah. So you can see here that this has been cut. So what I have been doing with them, ugh, I've been cutting them, leaving them in situ. So there's no root disturbance. So that could be quite a nice thing to do with crawlers. I had mentioned this before, I think, in a video. It's quite a nice thing to do to sort of keep it going. I'd love to tell you I have high hopes for this, but literally, guys, every single one of these has just been an absolute bitch since I got them in. There you go, I guess. I have some more at NSE. I didn't ship everything over when I did this last year, and I didn't do that because I didn't know if something would happen to the box. Can you imagine? Um, so I left some over there. I might have more shipped over, I think. Enid's got some still of mine. I don't think it's a lot, but there is some. I don't know. I don't have high hopes. Oh, I say this, right? I do say this. Let me show you where I'm at with this. This piece of the plant here, I can't take it out for you because obviously it's stuck in. I want to show you that the the petioles, the caterpillar and everything else. Because if you can see this, you'll see why I hold out hope. Can you see that across the caterpillar there? If I just rotate it, you see that? Yeah. So it keeps lying to me. It keeps leading me on and making me think it's going to be variegated, and then it just doesn't happen. So I'm not very happy about it, guys. If anyone has one of these, which I know not a ton of people have, but if you do, let me know if you found the same or not, because essentially every one of these variegated gloriosum are from... I think it's actually from the same mother. I can't be certain of that, but I know mine, when I got mine in 2019, I think it was, it was two cuttings from one mother at the time. And then the two cuttings branched out. I kept mine for years at NSA, just growing it out. And I don't know what the other person did with it really. So let me know if you have these kind of problems, but that's kind of what I'm doing at the minute to sort of fight it. But as you can see, the good fight is not working. So I thought I'd show you this because all in the name of transparency, that's my variegate gloriosum. It's not all of it, don't worry, I do have some nice bits. But that's not what this video is, is it? How boring would it be if I just showed you the nice bits all the time? If we can't do it now, when can we do it? Do you know what I mean? Gotta show you this one. This is literally a quick shout out to a casualty. I think this fell or something like that and it's just been left. This got left on the scissor lift the other day, sort of dangling off it. I just noticed it snapped this morning, but I think the rest of the roots of this plant are stuck in this pot, so it's just slowly dying. But I must tell you guys, I, I have hundreds of these. I can literally say most of the top of my unit is full of these. So I'm going to be brutally honest with you. A lot of people might not like me for it, but again, that's why we're here today. I've just let this kind of die. Now, I know that the base of this is in lacquer and it's fine, but this bit, I, I don't care anymore, guys. I, they've lost so much value, these plants. That's not necessarily why I don't care. I've never liked these plants anyway, and I find them a bit annoying. What plant am I on about, you ask? Can you tell if I hold this up for you? There you go. Hope you can see that. This is Philodendron Pareso Verde. And as you can see, this here, can you see it there? It's just straight up snapped. Straight up snapped. And then the base is here. So... He's nice. Again, I'm not going to linger on him because there's not a lot to linger on. 
But that's him, literally just slewn over my scissor lift because he obviously maybe he got stuck to something and someone pulled him. I'm, I'm not really sure what happened to him. But that's him. Uh, he's probably going to live out his days in a corner till he dies. And that's that. I know a lot of people ask me whether I can like do giveaways or, or stuff like that or, or leave stuff like this out for people. I will touch on that at the end. I will just keep going through this and then I will say a little bit about that at the end because a lot of people asked me about this last year and I put it in a comment, but I'd probably like to reiterate it on video. But anyway, I'm not going to hang on him because he's hanging on himself. What's the point? This is so embarrassing. You guys are going to just hate me after this. This is a tiny little pot of a shit ton of philodendron Florida ghosts and they're just little cuttings and they look like shit. Shit, guys, they look like shit. And I'm gonna show you how shit they look. Like, make no mistake, this looks like shit. I don't know if the camera's making them look like shit, because if anything, this looks really bushy. But this isn't one plant. This is tons and tons of plants. Like, there's a shit one here. If I just pull at him. I'm, I've had this for years, by the way, just to stop you there. I know you might think, oh, these are recent propagations. Um, no, I've had these for maybe three years, and they're normally in the dark, they're normally underwatered, and they're just generally neglected. They don't get fed, they don't get anything. And for some reason, guys, they're still alive. Now, that's a great testament to Philodendron Florida Ghost, by the way. And that kind of shows because, again, they're more mass-produced now and you can get them anywhere. Again, anything that's super easy and super tolerant, you will find it eventually in a box store. I don't even care what kind of plant it is, you're going to find it in a box store. I don't care how rare it is, you're going to eventually find it in a box store, if it's even remotely desirable. I just wanted to show you how shit this is, and I, I really mean it, guys. I'm not just saying this. This is awful. Check this out. Can I put my hand back behind this one? Look at this! I mean, look at it! It's just... Oh! Like, is that a separate plant? I don't even know. The plant here, and look how small it's having to grow. That's genuinely what happens to a Florida ghost if you neglect it beyond all repair. That's it. That right there is really indicative of just how bad it can get. How horrific is that? I just had to show you it because this really fits the bill for today. I feel like this is really, really good. If anyone's new here and they're thinking, well, how how did you neglect this? How do you not know about it? Generally, you can't really see it behind me, but I have a lot of plants in this shop. I have over 7,000, I think, somewhere like that. I lost count. I stopped counting last year when I did the final count on them. There were about 7,000 anyway. So it's pretty easy to miss them. It's pretty easy to miss them, but oh my goodness me. I know, don't get me wrong, I know there's somebody that would want this, but I'm going to be honest with you, I am still going to leave it in a corner. Maybe we can check on it next year if it lives and just see how bad it gets. That might be quite fun. So I think we'll leave him at that. Again, I'll just show you some really shitness because not if, not all of it is actually rooted in the pot. Some is just slewn in there. So there you go. Philodendron Florida Ghost. Three years old. Can you believe it? Y'all might ask me what happened to this next plant and honestly, I don't know. I don't know because the root growth on it is great. So I don't know if it's just been sucking up battery acid or something. But this is pretty rough. This is pretty rough. I think, I think it's just Anthurium crystallinum. But the fact that I'm having to say to you, I think gives you a sort of indication on what this kind of looks like. So without further ado, the Anthurium crystallinum. I'm saying it's crystallinum because I'm looking at that going, yeah, I think that's a crystal, right? Do we think? I, I think. I, there's no tag. Oh no, there is a tag. <gasps> okay, it's not a crystal. It's not a crystal. This kind of makes sense to me now. I'm not excusing this. This is really bad. I will tell you what it is after I've shown you the leaves. That makes me feel like 1% better, guys, literally, because I can grow crystals in, like, nothing at all, and they're kind of okay. Ooh, I mean, I can't tell you what order these leaves are grown in. I think this one might have been first. There is a little pop here, by the way. These two leaves are a separate new plant, which I should probably separate out and give some love. But this is one of them. This hasn't done too bad. You can see some mechanical damage on there. Generally, for an old leaf, that's not even that bad. That's That's kind of okay. We then skip to this leaf. This leaf could be older, don't get me wrong. That's looking really nice. It's quite yellow. There's no pests on any of these, by the way. I need to reiterate that. None of these plants that look gnarly, it's not a pest issue. These plants are absolutely spotless, literally. If you see any weird white bits, you can see it's been sprayed with antifungal stuff, pesticide stuff, like loads of, loads of shit like that. As you will see, it's beautifully dirty. Can you see the dirt? There you go. Little bit of dirt there. So we have that leaf. That's lovely. And then we have this leaf, which just... It didn't really, it didn't get its chance really. So I can't really tell you what's happened to that other than it's just, it just gave up halfway through. And then we have this little number, which, 
Literally. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is to do with whatever it's been sucking up, because this is literally like it's been sucking up battery acid. Now that's kind of the newest leaf there. Is that the newest leaf? Yep, no, literally, guys, this is the newest leaf. How beautiful is he? Now, as I mentioned before, I thought he was a crystal, but he's actually not. Now, I think I would have realized he wasn't a crystal if he had been his true color, although you can see he's quite dark. So this is actually, I think it's Anthurium Bessii Af. So it's not quite Bessii, but it's not a crystal anyway. And funny enough, I remember when I've got these in, I think I've mentioned it before, they're kind of difficult. Like they are not an easy velvet type at all. They look great. I mean, theoretically they look great. They don't look great now, but they are not the best to grow in my experience. Again, it's just me. I'm just one person with one growing style, one set of growing conditions and everything else. I don't know it all, of course not. But for me, I find them difficult. Not difficult to root. This looks fine. This has got plenty of roots. It's actually lodged it's that many roots. I can just show you there. You see that? But yeah, you can see it's, it's literally lodged, but it's unhappy as hell. So it obviously wants to leave. So at some point I'll probably repot this. This is not beyond salvageability. Plus, to be honest, I've never tried my feed on things like this. So I might try it because you never know, right? It might just go poof because my feed has other things in it than just feed. So if it's missing something, it might get it. I have a hunch. Um, I might try that at some point, actually. For now, I just I just got to show you this because this is just rough. Like, I feel like any shop would be embarrassed to show this. So I'm showing you for some reason. <laughs> so there he is, Anthurium Bessii looking, well, he's looked Bessii, honey. Right then, this little number here, I do believe he's got a lot of root. Can you tell how long he's been here? Can you tell? This is a lot, this is a lot. Beautiful green root. This guy, I do think he is a cross between Anthurium Warraquinum, so Queen Anthurium, and I think he's a cross between that and Anthurium Waterburyanum. I think, I can't even be sure. He's got no tag in him, but I think that's what he is. If that's what he is, I've had this guy a long time, you know. I've had this guy since the old shop. I don't think I have any more of them. And if I do, he's clearly got separated from them, which is normally when you find gnarlies like this, this is how you find them because they just get stuck with something and you didn't realize they were there. And then they grow really horrible because you don't get to check them and give them what they need. So I'm not gonna linger on this. It was just a point of showing you, hey, you know, this is something I've had for ages. And honestly, this doesn't look horrific. I totally acknowledge that. This is probably what a lot of people would show you and say that it looked horrific. Does that make any sense? Like, I feel like this is in the comfort zone of horrific for social media, whereas some of the other stuff, like the last plant I just showed you, absolutely not, absolutely not. So that's him anyway. I'm gonna just drape his little roots over because he's got so many. So he could probably benefit from a repot, a little bit of a flush out, treat him a little bit for some antifungal, antibacterial. Again, he's got absolutely zero pests, and if you don't believe me, hopefully that will focus. There's literally nothing on there at all. Absolutely nothing on at all. None of them do. So I know it's not a pest thing. It's probably just a me thing. You know, it's just a me thing. I've done this, but I didn't know where he was. I didn't even find this guy today, Ben did. So hell knows where he was. You know what? I would say a lot of these plants were up above on the top shelves, but they really aren't. I don't even have that as an excuse. Like the Bessie I was down low, I think. The Gloriosum, obviously it's been monitored. So that was much closer. The Florida Ghosts that I showed you a little bit ago, they weren't up behind either. So... I don't really have any excuses right now other than I guess I'm just busy and this happens. But yeah, I do feel like this is kind of in the comfort zone a little bit. So this is, I believe this is Anthurium Waterburyanum crossed with Warraquinum. I believe because it is velvety and it is pretty cute and you can sort of see the, uh, the shape on there. I've just hit myself with a plant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Couple of things before we end. I have my phone out because I took a couple of pictures early on of the unit. So I need to see the pictures to talk you through them because I'm going to put them on the screen. First thing I have to show you, we'll go for it this way, is my wonderful big Monstera Aurea large form. Oh guys, guys, he's done not so good. He's done not so good. I couldn't stop the burning. If you remember, he was getting burned upstairs. He's still doing it. To top that off, he got left in a really shit spot and he's crawled all weird and it's not good. He needs to cut down starting again. I'll probably propagate him because I think that there is probably a lot of people that want this. Plus his genes are really good. So we'll probably do that. So you might be able to see that he's grown a bit shit. All of his leaves are pretty crispy. 
The newest leaf there is not even able to grow properly because he's shunted up against the wall. There's a lot less stuff in here now. I've had a clear out recently, but at the time, everything was pushed up against him, so he's not looking his best. Coincidentally, if you look at the background of that picture, you can see just how badly my philodendron Florida beauties are doing because they're kind of growing up the wall almost. They need cut down. I have not propagated them in a long time, so they're doing a bit shit as well. So that's him anyway. Oh, the next picture... <laughs> Oh lord. The next picture is, it's its not necessarily special, but I just want to highlight that this is happening in my unit right now. This is a picture of one of the shelves on the back wall there, and if you can see, there is shit growing up it. So we have a Dubaia on the left and on the far right. The Dubaia on the far right is quite large, and I mean quite large. Each leaf is a handprint. I think I've taken a picture of it before. It's big, literally. I'm looking at it now on the wall. Easily a hand each leaf. It's huge, right? At least the bits I can see from here. The other side, a bit smaller. Those Dubaia have been there since I had those really big Dubaia in hanging off those shelves in like 2020. And what happened was they started climbing up the wall because they were there that long. And I sold off the big bits of Dubaia or I put them on the wall or I did whatever I was going to do. And I just went and I cut them, expecting really for them to sort of drop off the wall and die. Now, the one on the left, I don't know if you can tell by this picture or not, but it's kind of dying now. I think it's had enough. The big one so far seems all right, but literally these plants have their own aerial roots and they're just crawling up the walls on the room. So it's kind of awesome, really. In the middle of those two, though, you can actually see a Syngonium aurea that's making its way up the wall as well. So basically, I haven't moved that tray in months and now it's doing that because I haven't got around to propagating it. So that's another one that I want to show you. Next thing. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize I had that. That's a closer up picture of the other Dubai that's larger. You probably don't get a sense of how big that is, I don't think. But uh, trust me when I say it's quite large. Again, it's not doing brilliantly. The out of, outside of some of the leaves are turning a bit, as was everything in this unit. But it's looking all right. What else have we got? Oh, yeah. So have I got a... Yeah. This is a zoomed in picture, and I will put the next picture up after this. This is a zoomed in picture of somewhere in my unit that I like to call Chaos Corner, also known as Carnage Corner. We kind of switch between it. It's essentially a place, and I'm looking at it while I talk to you, it's essentially a place where plants come to become unruly, to maybe drop down dead, to maybe not drop down dead, to maybe turn into something else. And the picture I'm showing you now, of course, is a Monstera. I think it was variegated at one point, pretty sure. It's just crawling up the wall, and I haven't put a tray on there in a little while, so now it's just, it's just chilling, it's just climbing up the wall. At some point I will cut that probably throw it away um, and see what happens. You can see on the bottom, it's full on rooted in. It's just there. It's a living its best life. So we have that up the wall. And if I show you the next picture, you can actually see Chaos Corner for what it is. Um, it's literally the shelf that's closest to the living wall right beside me. If you've ever watched an old tour, it's that one. There was probably some shit there in the last tour. I don't know. It's, it's constantly been a corner full of shit. There's a lot of shit up there. Um, we've got some, what was known as Montanum, Philodendron Montanum at the top. I know it's not, it's got a different name now. There's some Dark Lord right up at the top. I think there's some um, Paraiso Verde at the very top. Then coming down the right hand side, I think we've got some Jerry Horn, some Lime Fiddle as well. Below that, I've got just a variety of Philodendron Fuzzy Petioles and stuff. Again, more Dubai are grown up the back wall. And the bottom shelves are just an amalgamation of crap, really. It's really difficult to even show you what it is. I can see a Monstera Brazil in the front of the picture there. So I just wanted to show you some of those pictures to show you. It doesn't just extend to these plants right now. It extends to the entire unit. So I wanted to kind of show you that in a way. I haven't done a full tour because honestly, I thought I'd have the time. I don't. Plus the plants aren't in a great state. Like a lot of them are quite yellow and everything. It's just been a bad couple of months, really. It's really indicative of how busy I've been. I can kind of see it reflected in the shop, so not so good. If you're thinking about writing a comment, basically saying, yo, why can't you do a giveaway? Why can't you leave them outside for someone to collect? Why can't we buy them from you? I'm about to answer those now really quickly because, again, everyone did this last year. So, okay, why can't you sell them? So, that wouldn't look good on my shop if I sold things that were less than perfect. And if there is a thing about less than perfect, and you know me, I think it's okay to sell less than perfect things. But this is like several levels down from that. This is like really scratchy. And I wouldn't want my brand doing that personally. Also, I, I don't feel like I'm delivering a nice service if I were to do that. So I wouldn't do it for that reason. Also, I'm pretty sure someone would get it anyway and want a refund. And that just costs me money to send it out at that point. Similarly, if I were to do a giveaway and send it out, it costs me money to send the plant out. So I'm already losing money by doing that. 
So I wouldn't do that either. The other option is, you know, can I not come and pick it up and collect it from you? Uh, no, I don't let members of the public in here. That is just a hard rule that I have. Members of the public will not be in here unless it's someone I mentioned earlier on, like for an interview or something that's a little bit different. Other than that, no. So no one would come onto the property in that way. Similarly, people have said, can you leave it outside for us to collect? No, I see it as exactly the same thing. I do not want a bunch of people coming outside to collect these plants at random. I don't want that. Um, I don't really need to explain why I don't want that. I think it's just a bad idea for everyone involved. So what I'm saying is really, unless I keep them and decide to nurture them, sometimes, very rarely to be honest, very, very rarely will I throw something out, but they are susceptible to being thrown out, depending on what they are. If they have absolute zero value, then I will throw them out. It is what it is. There is no other safe way to get rid of them, or there is no way to get rid of them that doesn't cost me money. So I have to think about that. So if you were curious as to why I don't do that, that's why. And I will link last year's video down for you down below because last year's video had a little bit more gnarlies in it and it was a bit, it was slightly different, I guess, on some of the gnarlies that I showed. So if you want to see another video like this one, I will link you to last year's. So you might see in the comments on that that people have asked me those questions and I probably did answer them, I think. So anyway, I hope that clears that up for you. Thank you very much for watching this video. It was it was weird to make, but I, I kind of have fun making these and I should probably make them a little bit more often. So if you would like a series or, you know, not an official series, but you know, if you'd like me to do this more often, then please do leave a comment letting me know that because I'm quite, I don't know, I, I feel like I've got a lot of stuff throughout the year, like stuff that's failed or something like that. Like I keep telling you about propagations and stuff that have done well, but I don't tell you enough about stuff that's failed or I mean I tell you about it but I don't show you it if you know what I mean so maybe I could do more of that so let me know what you think thank you very much for watching this video I hope the Halloween season is treating you well and if you like this video please leave a like down below if you'd like to see any more of my content then please feel free to subscribe if you are not already that is it for this week's video guys and I will see you in the next one bye